Hello and welcome back to the channel and we're doing another rapid fight scene of trauma diagnosis and arguably the scene that inspired this series because they pretty much break it all down themselves. We're doing the discombobulate fight scene from Sherlock Holmes. The first minute or so shows the two of them exchanging blows until the fighter spits on the back of Sherlock's head and we see a much more clinical end to the fight and that's where we'll pick this up. So three, two, one. Continue the fight. fight. This must have registered on an emotional level. First, distract target. Then block his blind jab. <laughs> Cut with cross to left cheek. Possible fracture to the zygomatic bone, so the cheekbones, the second most common fracture on the face after nasal fractures. If the fracture is displaced, it will require surgery from a max back surgeon to stop any long term problems like deformity or difficulty opening the eye or opening the mouth. Discombobulate. Dazed. Discombobulate. So many people have written that on my last few videos. It's not a medical phrase, it just means to be confused, but Sherlock could be meaning it in a few ways here. It could be meaning a concussion, so um, an injury to the brain, or a disruption to the inner ear, because blunt trauma to the temporal bone, particularly if it affects the mastoid process, the bony bit behind the ear, can cause disruption to the inner ear, which would cause ringing to the ears if the cochlea is disturbed, that's where you sense your hearing, or unsteadiness if the force of these vibrations upset the vestibular labyrinth, part of our balance system. Employ elbow block. And body shot. Blunt trauma to the right lumbar region, probably just some bruising to the skin and the muscles such as the internal and external oblique. Blunt or left. We can make jaw. I'm not quite sure how the jaw can be weakened here. It's either fractured or it's not. The only thing I can think of if he's talking about damage to some of the structures around the jaw, such as the masseter muscle, which is responsible for chewing and closing your mouth, or damage to the cartilage and ligaments in your temporomandibular joint. Now fracture. Fractured jaw, Sherlock doing all the work for me. Most mandibular fractures are as a result of assault, as we see here, and a significant number affect the condyle, so the upper bit of the mandible where it makes the joint. Due to the kind of circular shape the mandible makes with the skull, it's not uncommon for mandibular fractures to fracture actually in two places. Again, another referral to the max back surgeons to reduce the risk of deformity, reduce mobility and stiffness in the jaw, dental problems and nerve damage. Worth noting here, punching a jaw is probably gonna give a Sherlock some kind of injury too, most likely a boxer's fracture, so fracture to the knuckle of the little finger or fracture to the knuckle of the ring finger. Break crack ribs. Crack ribs are technically already broken. We just use the term fractured. But I'm guessing he used the phrase crack to mean a hairline fracture or a fracture that's not displaced, so has good alignment. The impact here is in the right upper quadrant. He just glances the bottom of the ribs here, what we call the costal margin. Technically though, it's not a rib at this point. It's part of the costal cartilage, so this would be a costal cartilage fracture. Around 12 weeks to heal, and it's super important that we get on top of the patient's pain because the patient isn't taking nice deep breaths, then they can develop a pneumonia. Traumatized solar <laughs> Although the word trauma is a medical expression, I've never heard it as an adjective. A patient had a traumatized abdomen. Anyway, blunt trauma to the area of the solar plexus. Many of us would have experienced this when we become winded. The solar plexus is a collection of nerves in that area. Solar because it radiates out like a sun and plexus is any junctions of nerves in the body. We actually call this in medical speak the celiac plexus because celiac means gut and that's where the nerves supply. But it's actually not irritation to this that makes you winded. It's actually irritation irritation to the diaphragm and send it into spasm, the diaphragm being your main muscle of breathing and if it's spasming, it makes it difficult to take deep breaths. But this dude has already fractured his costal cartilage so he'll be having trouble breathing anyway. Dislocate your entire Partial dislocation, what we call a subluxation, an entire dislocation, we just call it dislocation. What we suspected before was a condyle fracture of the mandible, so where it goes into the joint. So if this is damaged, it's gonna make the joint more unstable and more likely to be dislocated. Huge kick to diaphragm. 
Another blunt force trauma to the solar plexus would be dealing with bruising to the abdominal muscles and maybe even spasm of the diaphragm too. Diaphragmatic rupture is uncommon, so this is where we have force applied to the abdomen that forces the abdominal organs up through the diaphragm, ripping them through the diaphragm, ending them up in the thoracic cavity. This would cause difficulty breathing, bleeding, and can obstruct the bowel too. However, this would be very unusual given this mechanism of injury. It generally requires a lot more force for something like that to happen, so like a car accident or a significant fall from height. In summary, ears ringing, jaw fractured, three ribs cracked, four broken, diaphragm hemorrhaging. So I would say the jaw is a fracture dislocation. The three ribs cracked, four broken, well, they're all fractured, and if you've got that number fractured, you'd worry about a flailed chest. And the diaphragmatic rupture, unlikely but not impossible physical recovery six weeks six weeks i'd say closer to six to 12 weeks depending on how the ribs are fractured and also diaphragmatic hemorrhage and flail chest which we think might be going on here can be life-threatening full psychological recovery six months the last week the defect of head utilized agreed on the psychological recovery and it would definitely incapacitate someone stopping them spitting on you to generate some breath with a fractured jaw, fractured ribs, and a diaphragmatic hemorrhage <laughs> would be pretty difficult. So there you have it, my breakdown of this great scene from Sherlock Holmes. He does it a few times, doesn't he, throughout the movie. I can't wait for the third in the trilogy if they ever get around to making it. I'm continuing to work my way through the best fight scenes in the business, so if there's any more that you want me to check out, please leave a comment down below. And as always, thank you so much for all the support on the channel, for all the likes, all the shares. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, I have some face coverings available. They are styled with all the cells of the immune system. I'll leave a link down below if you want to check them out. So on that note, have a great day and I'll see you soon.